Okay, so this is episode 29 of Windows 10 on Raspberry Pi 4, and this is the best performance I've ever had, and uh, it's also running from an SSD drive as well, so I'm really pleased about that. I'm using the latest version from the Insider build. I was using these Samsung bars, which are mass storage devices, so they're not as fast as they could be, but they are faster than SD cards in the Pi, especially as Windows 10 doesn't really recognize the SD card slot as uh, as the speed it should be. Um, but uh, but from my pretty inexpensive SSD drive with my CSL cable, uh, I've got Ethernet support, I've got audio going through the 3.5mm jack, and the installation, there was no extra bits I had to do or anything like that. It's very, very straightforward. But I thought what I'd do is try out some programs. So let's zoom into screen capture. And I've just switched over to my Vonitz adapter, which is a Wi-Fi to Ethernet adapter. I've got a separate video on that, um, but I remembered last time that it had better performance than my Ethernet cable, which is a bit weird, but I've got a very long Ethernet cable and maybe that's something to do with it. So some of the programs have been installed through the Windows Store, um, but also other ones, I've just gone to the web browser and uh, I've done a search. So say for instance, something like Audacity, uh, I've just typed that in uh, and found the official site and installed it from there. Uh, and everything works as you would expect it to with a Windows computer now that 64-bit apps have been supported for a little bit uh, and it just keeps getting better. These newer builds of Windows uh, are definitely running better on the Pi. So the WOR tool has been updated recently so we do a search for WOR Pi 4 uh, you can see on here um, they've updated it several times recently and uh, this is the latest version which is uh, 2.1.1. You can see here it talks about the NT Lite debloat scripts uh, from the Discord server. So basically, uh, on the Discord, there is a version of Windows which is lighter, which is designed to run better on the Pi 4. And you'll find a video by Raspberry Pi Projects and more if you want to do that. I'm just going to do a, a tutorial, not in this video, but in, probably in the next video, on a basic install of Windows 10 uh, because it's got so easy now. And I think some people have probably seen all the steps and thought, oh, I won't bother. And also so many things are missing. Well, so many things are working and the performance is so good now that I think it's worth it. Um, but I'll do that in a separate video. Now, if I scroll down just to show the version that I'm using. So I got mine from adguard.net. So if I click on that, and I downloaded this version. So I did uh, Windows Insider. The version I used was the latest one at the time, uh, and it was the ARM64 one. It was the 21370.1. Obviously, I picked English for language. Uh, and the addition I, t I did, uh, I always do uh, Windows 10 Home. I always have done. I don't need the extra bits that Professional gives me. And if I scroll down a bit, and the type of download I did uh, was ISO. And I've got previous tutorials that you can follow but just using those settings. But as I say, I will do a separate tutorial. But I just wanted to show the programs because I often do the tutorials but don't really show Windows working. And it's got to a stage now where it really is nice to use on the Pi. Uh, the web browser works well. Programs tend to be really, really good. Gaming is still not good uh, on the Pi 4 in Windows. But uh, there are, people have got things running. I've got several things running, but generally you'll get better performance from Linux or Android or uh, or Chromium or, or various different operating systems on the Pi. But for apps and programs that you use and Windows ones that you want to be able to use specifically, uh, it's actually really usable. So something like Win, Win32 Disk Imager. Now I've found alternatives now within Linux, but before that, uh, loads of tutorials would point you to this program. And, uh, and it seems to work fine. I copied an SD card and, uh, and everything seemed to work fine uh, within it. So nice to see that on there. Okay, so next up, Audacity. And uh, this is a program I used to use ages ago. It's an audio editing software and it is really, really good. Uh, I used to use it on a very old version of Windows, but it's always been free and it's always been excellent. Now, um, I wanted to import some audio files which I'd created in GarageBand and they were the wrong format. So I've got intro here, uh, which if I play a little bit, you might recognize it. There you go. Um, so because that's an M4A file, uh, Audacity didn't recognize it. It would need a plugin. And rather than do the plugin, I thought I'll just, um, there's a small file, I'll just convert it. And I converted this one, which is also some music I created on GarageBand. 
uh, to a WAV file so I could use it. And I use Zamzar, and uh, you can see here was the file. Uh, so you import it into Zamzar, it converts it online, you click download, and then you've got the file that you can do what you want with. So if I go, and I really like, uh, all these icons have changed a lot in these latest versions of Windows. Uh, it really does look very nice. So let's close that down and let's import the file. So import audio, it's in my documents folder. So this is the one that it won't import because it's the wrong format. But if I click on Mellow, as I say, I could put a plug in, but I'm not intending on using this. I just wanted to try it out. And if I hit play, you can see, oh, and I can stop it and I can uh, edit various different things and I can generate various different things. I can add effects and things like that. So if I wanted to do fade out, for instance, there you go, you can see that's done a fade out. And if we try it, so this should start to fade out now, which it does, and then it will come back into the track. So as you can see, working well. Uh, let's close that down because I don't need to do any more with that. You can see I've installed VLC. Uh, I just installed VLC from the Windows Store, but the WORCP tool has a better performing version of VLC, so that's worth looking at. Something a bit different, I installed Abbey Word, which wasn't a program that I've ever used before, but I looked up sort of Windows 10 programs that people use and people like, and, uh, and this had come up, so I thought I'd give it a try. Uh, it is like a, a Word alternative, really, uh, and so you can type as normal. I don't know if it's got a spell check in it. No, it doesn't look like it has. Um, but there is things like word count and various things in there, uh, and obviously changing the fonts and the text and all that sort of thing, but it, it seemed to work pretty well, really. And that was just from the official website. So Handbrake is video conversion, and I've done that in various videos uh, for speed tests and things like that in the past. Uh, it takes a while to load up, but uh, it does seem to work fine. Here you go. So I cut out a bit then because it took a while to load up, but it's uh, it's all up and running now. I've got a 1080 video clip here, so I can import that in. And you can see that it copes with that fine. And then we could choose uh, what to save it as. So I guess I'll do something smaller so that it runs fine on this. Uh, so if I go, um, let's go for this one, 48030. And let's encode that. So not as fast as uh, within Linux in this instance. There's no hardware support for graphics, so that's what's going to make that slower, I guess. Uh, but yeah, it's looking like it's going to take 10 minutes uh, or more. Yeah, I think I'm going to abort that because uh, I want to get on with the video. But you can see that it works. Uh, and just another example of something that just installs and, and works within Windows 10 on Raspberry Pi. So I installed 7-Zip as well, uh, which is uh, a free unzipper. Uh, I won't demonstrate that because obviously we, we know what unzipping files looks like. Also installed GIMP, uh, which is like a Photoshop uh, free equivalent, which again is, well, is available on lots of platforms and works really well. So I've cut out some of the loading process because it takes a while on the initial startup. So it took a while to load up, but we're here now. So let's import a file. So in my documents, I've got a photo here. There we go. And uh, I don't know what sort of tools I've got on here. Let's have a look. Our filters might be worth trying. So enhance. Let's go for sharpen and just hit OK. Yeah, you can see that sharpen pretty quick. But you've got all sorts on here, just as you would have in Photoshop. It's not a program I use, so I'm not really that familiar with it, but you can see here that everything seems to be uh, present and working. So let's close that down. Discard the changes. And uh, I also installed uh, iTunes, uh, mainly for podcasts. Um, so if I wanted to download and play podcasts, uh, then I can do that with iTunes. iTunes isn't the best program to use within Windows. It never has been. But, uh, but it seems to be, once a track is playing, it seems to work fine. And if I did a search, uh, let's say MacBreak 
weekly. You can see that it comes up. We can see the most recent episode is here and if I hit play, connecting. So you can hear that playing, but also if I click on here, I've got my HomePods. Uh, so if I uncheck that, uh, let's give it a bit of volume. Uh, and so you can see that it will play audio uh, with AirPlay, well it could to my TV or to my HomePod speakers, which are just behind me. A big invitation to talk about the Apple. And as you can hear, lots of bass. Uh, right, so that's iTunes. So last up, I downloaded something. I didn't know what it was, but it, it came up as some sort of recommendation. Liquid Text PDF. So this apparently is an iPad and uh, Windows app. So if I click on something here, what happens? I guess it's just, de yeah, it's just demos. So things that you can create. I wonder if it lets me move things around. Oh yeah, it looks like it's letting me move things around. And as you can see, so just a random program, install it from the Windows Store or from the web, and uh, and just seems to work. I don't know how I, put, how I put an image in there. Draw a text box. I don't know, because I haven't got um, a paid for version of this, I'm not sure if it lets me uh, add things into it. But uh, I wonder if that Abbey Word will let me put images into. Let's go back to that. And, uh, and have a look and see how easy it is to put text in there, uh, how easy it is to put photos in there. So insert picture. There we go, so insert a picture. Oh yeah, that worked fine. And let's insert another picture. A couple of local beaches. Uh, so if I do view and zoom, 75% is that going to show the whole page nearly yeah so performance wise it definitely seems to be a lot better especially now that we can use SSD because for a while you couldn't use SSD drives and uh, you just had to make do with either USB drives or SD cards which the performance was really quite slow on also worth mentioning from the discord you can download this new WOR control panel as you can see it gives you performance readings uh, you've got control over the GPIO pins ask on the Discord for more information on that. Uh, there are various applications which are ready to be installed, so you can see VLC. This is, as I mentioned before, a better version than the one I installed from the Windows Store. I was just playing around with it though. Uh, and you can see various different web browsers, paint.net as well. We have an About option, and you can see that this was created by Amir and Marsan from the Discord. Uh, great work there. Uh, the UEFI firmware is listed there, uh, various different information. And under settings, there is an option to be able to overclock. But I couldn't get this to work uh, in this particular build. And I've used it before, and it's worked brilliantly before. But I think there's something slightly different about uh, this version of Windows and the latest WOR tool. Because if I plug my SSD drive into my Pi running Linux, uh, I can't see the boot drive. And I usually would be able to see the boot drive, and I would be able to overclock within that. But also, if I try and overclock with this, so if I drag this to... 2.1 gigahertz, which I would often do, uh, and then hit apply changes. You can see that it doesn't seem to be able to access it. And previous versions of this, uh, it would mount it and then allow you to do it. So I don't know why that's not working. I haven't looked into it a lot. I just thought it was worth mentioning because someone from the Discord has probably had it and uh, and been able to work out what it is. Yeah, I can't quit out of that. And I did find that when it initially uh, rebooted after trying this, uh, it didn't reboot and, it, and uh, I had to go back into the ordinary boot menu and select my SSD drive and then it booted and it was fine. But uh, yeah, something I need to play around with. They also have working dual monitor support on the Discord, uh, which is a driver and uh, you can install it, but you do have to run it at 1080. I run the Pi uh, with Windows at 720 because 1080 doesn't run that well. And obviously adding dual monitors, uh, it's great. It's a great achievement, but it's something that I don't really need uh, on Windows at this moment. But if you want that, head over to the Discord and there is a download about that. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.